So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, I thought uh, I would. I have something to share, the and time it's. Is um, standing still. The time is standing still because it's a FileMaker layout with a get current timestamp, which doesn't um, uh, refresh itself until you do something. So, if I go to the next record. Oh, hello. I have to first have to focus FileMaker and go to the next record. Yep. Okay. Um, then uh, it's uh, refresh itself. Uh, a minute is gone. That's nearly 10%. Okay, so uh, here we are at .fmp uh, 2021. Um, here on the about uh, page here, you can uh, have a look uh, all about .fmp. Uh, I am Mr. Watson. Uh, here on the about thing, you can find out all about me on my website, which is slow to load. Um, and today we're doing about Mermaid. And the question has already been um, placed. What is mermaid? Well, we know the one type. It's half girl, half fish. Um, and if it's half girl, half fish, then maybe it's Ariel. And Ariel is something like uh, uh, that. OK, that's Ariel. She's half girl, half fish. Um, but no, we're not doing half uh, girl, half fish. We're doing half text, half diagram. Um, we're doing mermaid uh, JS, which is a JavaScript library. Um, uh, at that uh, address there, I can click on it, I believe. I can click on this thing here and it jumps to the um, uh, Mermaid website where Mermaid is explained. And it says here, Mermaid lets you create diagrams and visualiz visualizations using text and code. It's a JavaScript-based diagramming and charting tool that renders markdown-inspired text definitions to create and modify diagrams dynamically. OK, um, this is the main uh, website of Mermaid. And if you scroll down here, you find lots and lots of stuff. Um, I'm going to go to my next record here, though. Um, OK, as I've said, it's a markdown-ish syntax for diagrams. Uh, OK, what does that mean? I presume everybody knows Markdown, kind of like writing text with little stars and uh, dashes and stuff and little uh, hash symbols, pound symbols uh, to get the formatting. Um, markdown is pretty much the same. So question, what do you think? This diagram here, how much code did I need to create it? Any suggestions? I can't see you, by the way. So maybe, to... maybe 10 lines of, of your text code. Ah, uh, yeah, OK. Oh, come on, somebody else. I go with 14 lines. We'll have a look. 19. OK, 19, but we've got one, two, three, four, five uh, yeah. there. So Egbert, well done. Egbert, good. You're right. Um, yeah, OK, so this code here is making this diagram. Very, very easy, very nice, very beautiful. Um, it's easy to read, graph left to right, dot .fmp, uh, .fmp goes to Mr. Watson, Mr. Watson goes to Mermaid, Mermaid goes to what is, what is goes to Ariel with a text in the middle, uh, et cetera, et cetera, with a little bit of click stuff down here. OK, so that's what we're going to look at today. Um, we have discovered Mermaid in this moment. We've seen a little Mermaid uh, example. Uh, and now we want to be inspired by Mermaid. So um, we're going to look at lots of uh, Mermaid diagrams to see how inspired we can get. So the first thing is, OK, for these um, diagrams, what kind of diagrams can um, Mermaid create? Um, at all. And if you, oops, that should be later. OK, here we have the mermaid diagram types that you can create using this uh, mermaid text syntax. You can do a flow chart, a sequence diagram, a class diagram, a state diagram, an entity relationship diagram, a user journey. Uh, a Gantt chart, a pie chart, and a requirement diagram. Um, Mermaid is a uh, open source um, software, and so this list is always increasing. Um, but yeah, let's have a little look at what we've got. Uh, flowcharts. 
Ah, okay. Uh, it's my little flowchart here. Um, I'm doing a presentation and you can either show or you can tell uh, in presentations. And it's better to show because that's inspirational uh, than to tell where everybody falls asleep. So having a little look at this um, chart here, we can have a little look. Okay. That's simply a graph. A graph is made up of nodes and edges. And so we've got a node here, presentation, and a node here, sleep. Uh, and the edge is here, a little arrow with the word tell in the middle, and there's an arrow with the word show in the middle going to inspiration. That makes that little diagram there. That's a flow chart. Um, the sequence diagram, if you don't know them, uh, is very useful, very useful in our business um, for mapping out uh, how various elements of a system talk to each other. Um, uh, and so here we've got uh, Alice, Bob and John talking to each other. Um, in this sequence diagram, Alice speaks to John and says, hi, hello, John, how are you? Uh, John's a little bit uh, crazy. And so he's um, fighting against hypochondria and uh, thinks for a minute in a little loop. And finally, rational thoughts prevail. And he says, oh, I'm great. Uh, and then he asks Bob, how are you? And uh, Bob answers, jolly good. OK, so that's a sequence diagram. Um, and it was sequen this sequence diagram which brought me to this whole um, uh, technology uh, a couple of weeks ago um, because I need to uh, document to my colleagues how a, um, a meeting, a meeting that you create in a software um, in the calendar is synchronized to uh, Outlook. Um, and when you synchronize a meeting to Outlook with the various people, participants, um, Outlook then sends emails off and the people send answers back. And uh, this mixture of um, calendar and email stuff is quite tricky for, for people to understand. And this is a great way of doing that. I'll show you that a bit later. What other diagrams have we got? Uh, a class diagram. I can zoom in there a little bit. Uh, I think uh, we may know those from kind of like object oriented uh, systems. Uh, you might use them in your uh, planning of um, FileMaker databases, uh, although FileMaker isn't so object oriented. And um, then we have a state diagram, uh, which shows um, how in a system you move from one state to another. So you start off still, uh, and from the state of still, you can uh, start moving uh, and you can stop again, which case you go back to still, uh, or if you're unlucky, you can crash. Um, and if you're parked and still, or you've crashed, then you come to the end of the process. Okay, that's a state diagram. Now um, oh, look here, I've got a uh, state diagram that I've made of our kind of development cycle. Um, so uh, we have a piece of uh, functionality, or I have a piece of functionality that I am developing. And at first, the state is unknown. And it's because we don't know whether it's good or bad code, we have to test it. So then it is in, in test. Um, and in the test, it either fails or it passes. Um, if it fails, then it's buggy code. Uh, and then if I fix it, it doesn't mean it's um, fixed. Uh, it means it's unknown again. Uh, and so you have to test it again. And so you keep going around this fail, fail, test, fail, test, fail, test, uh, until at some point you pass and then you come to OK. Unless, of course, you run out of time and you have to deliver your software. Um, and then uh, your bugs go into production and your customers uh, enjoy your bugs very thoroughly and uh, cause lots and lots of support um, time. Or if you've doing your programming well, you uh, uh, have an OK uh, database, which then goes into production and you have happy <coughs> customers. Alternatively, um, you just make something really shit and then throw it away. OK, so that's a state diagram. Um, entity relationship diagram, very useful in, um, uh, in planning databases. OK, about 10 minutes gone. Entity relationship diagram planning databases, uh, where you can say how one object uh, relates to another object. Um, you may want to use this kind of thing for planning uh, your FileMaker databases. Uh, and then there's this funny thing, uh, a user journey diagram. Um, I've never come across these before, and I'm not quite sure um, what uh, use I would set it to. Um, but basically, it's yeah, it's basically for um, feedback from users about um, good and bad uh, aspects of their day or of uh, of a process. 
say if you've got a process of making tea, going upstairs, doing some work, going downstairs and sitting down again, um, you can ask each of your uh, users uh, what's good, what's bad. And you get this kind of um, feedback. Uh, so have a little look in the code here. It's quite, quite funny and silly. OK, it's only a tiny little thing. Uh, it's a journey. Uh, that's the title of it. It's got a section go to work and a section go home. Um, let's look where are these sections. OK, so the sections are the top boxes. And then um, uh, under each of these sections, we've got the, the, the action. Um, and a, uh, I think it's a zero to 10 um, uh, rating and uh, who, who, this, who this action applies to. So we've got three people here in this uh, diagram, me, the cat and the dog, uh, which gets listed in a little um, legend here. And I could say, for example, uh, if I put me in, um, Oh, I'm 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 British or half British or something like that. So I'm going to put in nine here because I I love tea. Going upstairs, well, I'm a bit bit fat, so uh, going upstairs is a bit of a bad bad one for me. Doing work, um, yeah, I really rather quite doing work because I work with FileMaker. Going downstairs, oh, that's that's a, that's a ten. Uh, and sitting down is yeah, it's pretty good. I enjoy that. So that is my um, uh, feedback on this process. So in other words, you could you could send out a um, uh, feedback form to your customers and get them to uh, uh, input uh, rate parts of your software or whatever. And you can produce a little diagram like that simply by writing that little text. Nice. And we have um, a Gantt diagram. Ooh, very nice. Uh, code for that is really tiny. Look, um, we have a Gantt chart. There's a title. Uh, we say what the date format is. Uh, then we've got some sections. We've got a task with the, I think that's the ID number of the task, um, the date and how long uh, this task um, lasts. And in, in a section, uh, each task has to come after another task. So I could put in yet another task here. Um, that's, uh, I'll call that the last task. Oh no, look here, ah, oh, look here. It's defined here uh, where it's to come. And so I can say there uh, after, can I do this? Ooh, okay. Now, now I don't know what I'm doing. I haven't gone into these Gantt charts enough to know whether that should be. Uh, ha -ha. This guy hasn't got a ID yet. So can I say that? Hold on. Um, as you can see, I am very much in the learning and inspirational phase of uh, this technology. Okay. Well, changing that and putting a B1 in there um, didn't seem to work very well at all. So we'll come back to that later. Um, as I say, there is the uh, um, web page where you can look up exactly the syntax of these diagrams. Gantt charts, I haven't yet uh, done very much. I've done mostly graphs. Good old pie charts. We've probably had enough of those. Don't need to talk about those very much. And a requirement diagram, I have no idea um, how those are used, but I put it in here for completeness. OK. So. We've looked at lots of uh, mermaid diagrams. Hopefully now we're uh, more inspired than we were before. Um, yeah, what's next? Uh, what's next is learn mermaid. How do you learn mermaid? Uh, so we can learn mermaid by uh, looking in this file at things. Um, or you can try mermaid for yourself. i make the screen a bit smaller here. Um, and a great thing that mermaid has got is a live editor. Um, I think, however, the live editor doesn't open happily in the um, web viewer. Uh, so yeah, it complains about the Monaco. And so we'll open it externally. OK, here is a uh, the Mermaid live editor. And that's just online. And you go to uh, this address, mermaid.js github io, mermaid live editor. Um, and you can. Uh, uh, edit your code here and test it um, uh, to see what the diagrams are like. 
Um, the Mermaid uh, JavaScript library has all kinds of stuff in it that I don't know yet, um, including uh, exporting the diagrams as SVG diagrams and uh, stuff like that. I'm not that far yet, um, but it's all in there. Um, as you see up here as well, there's a command line interface. Uh, it's interesting. Have a look, have a look. I'm, 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 I'm not that far yet. Let's keep going. Um, so that was the live editor. Um, okay, or uh, I've got now just a few examples to like learn the sign text quickly. Um, this is a graph. Oh, I said you got graph uh, top down, TD top down, or graph LR left to right, or you've got, if you just put the name of a node, ID, that's a node. And it's shown like that. And you can add, um, first word is the, the ID that you reference. It's not allowed to have any spaces in it. But you can then, in square brackets, you can put whatever text you want to be in this node. Uh, and then you get a square box. Or um, if you put it in parentheses, uh, slightly rounded parentheses, you get a slightly rounded box. Uh, if you put it in uh, square and rounded or rounded and square, uh, you get uh, this kind of like pill shape. If you put two um, uh, brackets, two square brackets, you get uh, a sort of like procedure box. Uh, something else, you can make it a database shape or you can make it a circle and you can break up text by putting in a HTML like break in the in the text, so you can kind of like you can format things quite nicely. Um, the edges, as I've said, uh, uh, are made with arrows, um, and put it all together, and you get like this kind of stuff. Oh, uh, I forgot to say the the rhombus. The rhombus is with uh, I can make this all a bit bigger. Yeah? The rhombus is with um, curly brackets. And then you get a rhombus kind of shape. Oops, hold on, go a bit smaller again. Um, okay, and then uh, you can also add styling. Um, you can add styling to your stuff here by, for example, at the bottom, oops, hello, 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 click. At the bottom, you create some class definitions, um, which are like CSS class definitions here. We've got green, which has got this CSS stuff. We've got orange, which has got this CSS stuff. And then you apply the CSS in this way. You say the class of the object SG, uh, and somewhere up here, here, sorry, SQ square. So we've got a SQ object up here and the class of the SQ and of E is green. So the square and uh, the E thing is, is green. That's the way you can apply classes. It also has, built-in themes. So this is the Gantt chart again um, with, with the standard theme, um, or you can choose a uh, theme base and that's done at the beginning uh, before the um, keyword uh, with these funny percent, percent and then it's a JavaScript, uh, JavaScript init object in which you say the theme is base. And in this way, you can choose the base theme or the forest theme or the dark theme or neutral theme. Plus, you can add some more JSON variables to it. Um, so here we've got, uh, I can make it larger again so you can see a bit. Um, here we've not only got theme base, but we've got theme variables. And then there's all kinds of different variables. You can read about them in the uh, documentation. For example, the primary color, and you can set it, and you can have a list here of all the things that you want to tweak, um, and it tweaks it. So here we have uh, the Gantt diagram um, in the base theme with primary color red. OK, I'm not a designer, but uh, I wanted to just show you can, uh, you can uh, change uh, the the style of the charts quite nicely. Okay, uh, we now come on to the uh, slightly trickier bit, uh, and that is, okay, how do you get um, these things to be uh, interactive? And um, to tell the truth, uh, I'm not quite completely there yet on this one. Um, 
They've just introduced, I think in, in, in Mermaid 8, they've introduced a new security um, system, which means you have to um, set the security level of a chart to say what is allowed to be rendered in, in the nodes. And we're currently in a security state which doesn't let you render um, uh, HTML in, in the node names. So that hasn't worked here. And I haven't yet got so far as to work out how to up the security. So moving on. Uh, I tried a few things here to try and get it to work. Um, and in the end, it turned out a uh, uh, Gantt chart. I think it's slightly different to the um, other charts. And here in a normal flow chart, um, when you've got a node called link, uh, you just specify your behavior at the bottom. When you click the node link, then go to this address. So here, if I click here, that should go to, yep, GitHub. So that's that's gone to GitHub. So it is possible to put uh, click things in. Um, and now I then thought, okay, we can go to uh, HTTP places, but can we go, can we trigger JavaScript, for example, FileMaker perform script is what we'd like to do here so that we can pass our trigger back to um, a script in FileMaker. And that's not doing anything at the minute. And I think it's again because of the security um, level uh, doesn't allow script uh, based links. Um, and so we need to find out how to um, uh, up the security um, uh, state so that that is then being allowed by the mermaid renderer. So moving on. OK, well, we have. Um, Learned a bit of Mermaid, we've tried it for ourselves. Uh, we've had a look at the Mermaid Live Editor, and now we want to integrate Mermaid into your life. Um, uh, I think if I click on here, have I put a link on it? No, I haven't, I put it over here. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, integrations page from the Mermaid website um, showing where is Mermaid integrated into what tools. Uh, and if you look here, there's, you know, there's quite a lot of um, things in here. Okay, in GitLab, um, uh, for uh, code uh, projects uh, in there, you can just use Mermaid directly in your um, pages and stuff, and it'll just uh, render as you want in Azure DevOps, Tuli up Joplin, not quite in GitHub. It's not native in GitHub, but there's actions and SVG generator and stuff, which means you can, in your GitHub pages, you can um, have documentation in GitHub, you can use Mermaid there, and an action will automatically compile your little mermaid code into the diagram, something like that, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's more stuff here that it's uh, integrated into. But of course, we are interested in this one. Uh, no, 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 sorry, integrate into your editor, next one. Um, there's also plugins for VS Code. I don't know how many of you are into using uh, the S Code uh, these days. Um, I will show that briefly, one second. Where are we going here? On my computer at work, uh, which is where um, I started doing all this stuff uh, because I needed to um, show my colleagues how to do this sequence diagram. Yeah, okay, good, that's not working. Oh, yes, it is, it is, it is, it is. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Happy Juba, ho, hey! Okay, ping. Okay, here we are in uh, uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, and I've got a, my Termine Sync meeting um, markdown. And this is a little markdown file starting uh, about the Advanta uh, synchronization documentation. It's all in German because I'm here in um, Leverkusen near Cologne. Um, and thanks to if we try it here, Mermaid. Yeah, OK, here. Thanks to plugins in VS Code, we've got a Markdown Preview, uh, Preview Mermaid, and a Mermaid Markdown Sign Tag. So the Mermaid Markdown Sign Tag gives you nice colors, and the preview gives you this thing here. Um, so I'll give a quick, quick, quick overview of that. We have, uh, no, we don't. OK, so on the left, on the left is our software. Uh, in the middle is our sync. Um, 
app. On the right, we've got Outlook, um, and it's Santa Claus uh, uh, inviting um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and an alien to a meeting. Uh, and this shows how um, uh, the application server, our sync uh, process, reads uh, a calendar entry out of our software, passes it onto Outlook. Outlook puts a calendar entry in Santa's um, calendar. Uh, because it's got participants, then it sends emails. So the Outlook email send emails to uh, the local colleague, uh, Rudolph, who um, is in the local uh, Outlook um, installation, and to the alien who's outside. And Rudolph answers and says, yeah, I can come. And it comes back here and he gets, OK. So that's kind of like showing the very complicated way that synchronizes. It was from this point that I then came to where we are now. So if I can get back to my other screen. Yeah. So it's impossible to integrate this mermaid stuff into your editor. But what we want to do in the last three minutes of the thing is to look at, um, hello, I've got to focus FireMaker, is to look at how to integrate mermaid into FireMaker. Well, to integrate mermaid into FireMaker, I think I give you this file is the simplest way. Um, um, so what is this file? This file is um, uh, just a table. Uh, it's got um, diagrams. It's got the mermaid code. It's got uh, an about, um, uh, what do you think it's called? Tab. It's got an about tab with either a URL or with a um, integrated um, rich text editor. So you can put your own thing in or, or link to something. Um, and up here, uh, it says here add-on. It's like, you know, it's a future plan. It would be nice if we had an add-on, um, which would just, you can drop into your solution and ping, you have uh, mermaid diagrams. Um, maybe uh, Clickworks or somebody would uh, care to join in on the, um, on the process there to turning this into a very neat add-on. But I set this file up like an add-on. We've got the HTML here, um, which basically gets everything out of the next JS uh, thing, does a little mermaid initialize function um, when the page starts. And I believe in here is where you need to set the stuff about security. Um, that is the uh, mermaid minified library uh, in this info I've just described where you get it from. Uh, cascading style sheet, there is none at the minute, but if you put something in there, then the page has got a cascading style sheet. And then um, in here at the minute, I've got a mermaid render um, uh, script, which uh, basically in a similar way to add-ons uh, gets the stuff out of the um, other table, uh, renders it, that includes um, that includes uh, okay this variable dollar mermaid dollar mermaid I think is in the code uh, and so this this mermaid code gets built into this uh, HTML and then we set the web web viewer to the URL so basically um, it's this little bit of it's this little thing here which is um, rendering. Uh, rendering this mermaid. And then very finally, very quickly, because we're basically finished, uh, use cases, um, things we could do it for. That's the calendar sync that I just showed you on the other computer that you might want to use. Um, I would be quite interested in using this for rendering kind of like uh, information about scripts, um, possibly automatically using uh, a tool of mine. Um, so you might show a script like this, or you might have an uh, so like script if else blocks shown like that. You can have uh, let's see irrelevant. Uh, you can show subscripts um, in blocks like that, uh, and that's about it. Bang. <laughs>